Hello everyone. In this example, I'm going to show you guys how to find your expected rates of return or your expected required rates of return uh, using your capital asset pricing model, also known as CAPM. Um, you might recognize this example. This is the one that we used in class. Um, it's 15 stocks, and I actually provided the betas for you. However, in your homework, you're actually going to have to look up the betas. So let me show you how to do that now. I'm going to pull in this window. It's um, Yahoo Finance. Okay. And that's just going to finance.yahoo.com. And there's this box that says get quotes. Okay. Our first one was City, right? So I'm going to just type in C because I know that's the ticker. Or you could type in City Group. Doesn't really matter. Hit enter. And this is going to bring me to the City page of Yahoo Finance. So you can get all your information on the stock here. Um, pay attention to the left hand toolbar here. There's a category called Key Statistics. That's what we want. That's where the beta is going to be um, hiding, I guess you would say. Okay, when you get to this window, scroll down, and you're going to see that beta is on the right-hand side here. So right now, City has a beta of 3.11. Now, this is saying that um, City is very volatile. Um, it's... Um, if the market's doing well, it's going to do extremely well, but if the market's doing terrible, it's can do awful. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. So, beta is basically say how does a stock move with the market? Um, a company with a beta of one moves perfectly with the market. So, as the market goes up, the stock goes up. So the uh, market goes down, the stock goes down, but equally with that, um, the market. Now, if you have a higher beta, that's basically saying that you know there's more volatility. In, uh, with this stock. Um, you can also have a negative beta. Say you have a, a negative one beta. That's basically saying um, the stock performs exactly opposite of what the market does. And then you can also have a beta of zero. And the beta of zero is saying that there's the stock is completely independent. It doesn't move with the market at all. Okay? So, I like I said, um, Citigroup has a beta of 3.11 right now. So their beta has actually increased since last year because all these numbers are from last spring. This was off last spring's test, this problem. So you can see that City is probably a little bit more volatile than it was before. Uh, and um, it's probably for an, a numerous amount of things. Um, but anyways, let's get back into the problem. For homework, you guys are actually given the percent uh, portfolio. And the reason why I did that for the homework problem was because it's not realistic. Well, you can do it, but it's it's pretty much unrealistic that you're going to have the same percent of your portfolio uh, for each individual stock. So um, for this example, we're saying that um, each stock is 1 15th of the portfolio. And obviously on your homework, you're saying like some might be 20% of the portfolio, some might be 15% of the portfolio, so on and so forth. But for this example, we're going to say everything's equal. So 1 15th. So 6.67%. I'm just going to drag that all the way down because so I know that they're equal. Now, to find my weighted beta, that's just simply my beta times the percent portfolio. And I'm going to drag that down. You can do this by hand, too, or in Excel. It doesn't really matter. And this total, which is going to give us our portfolio beta, is the sum of all these. So we have a portfolio beta of 1.089. Okay, now uh, we were asking you to find your expected required rate of return. And to do this, we're going to use the capital asset pricing model, or CAPM. And CAPM, uh, the formula for that is your risk free rate plus your beta times your market risk premium. And your market risk premium is simply your, um, the rate of the market minus your risk free rate. So I have that over here, as you guys can see this. Um, the market rate is 10%, the risk-free rate is 3 So obviously we have a market risk premium of 7%. So we can easily calculate this. You can do it by hand for each stock, or like I said, you can do it in Excel. That's your risk-free rate of 3% plus your beta. So I'm going to hit 2.64 times my market risk premium, 7%. And like I said, that's just the 10 minus the 3. And I'm going to want to anchor these, the K4 and the K5, because they're off to the right. Ooh, why did that do that? And when I scroll down, when I scroll this bar down, I want those to stay in those cells. So you guys might remember that from capital budgeting. 
hit enter. So Citigroup has uh, an expected required rate of return of 21.48% uh, with a beta of 2.64 and a uh, market risk premium of 7% and a risk free rate of 3%. That's what you'd get. That's what you'd expect anyways with those conditions. I can drag that down and there you go. So all of them are calculated. That's why sometimes using Excel is the best way to go. All right, so we can also find our weighted expected required rates of return, right? And that's just simply the same way we're going to do it the same way we did, we did our weighted beta. That's just going to be your percent portfolio multiplied by your expected required rates of return. And I'm going to drag that all the way down. And then in this box in the bottom, I'm going to want to sum all these up, and that's going to give me the expected required return for the portfolio. And that gives me 10.621%. Okay. And now there's actually another way that we can calculate this 10.621%. And that's actually using our portfolio beta and putting that into the CAPM model. So I'll show you that right now. So this could be a check on the test because we might actually give you, you know, say like five stocks and say find use the CAPM model to find the expected required rates of return, but and then also find the um, expected required rate of return for the portfolio. Um, so this way to beta, um, or the portfolio beta might be a way to check yourself. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I know my formula again is that risk-free rate of 3% plus my beta, and we're going to use the portfolio beta now, right? 1.089 times um, our market risk premium of 7%. Remember, that is just the 10 minus 3%, or the market rate minus the risk-free rate. And hit enter. And like I said before, I knew this was going to actually equal the 10.621%. So um, it's a way to check yourself. Now the question says, are we fully diversified? If so, why or why not? Well, we definitely want to look at our beta, okay? And to say we're diversified is, you know, you have a huge amount of stocks. What you want to do is really get around one, right? We want to move with the market. We don't want to be, I mean, you, could, you have benchmarks. You might want to be more or less moving with the market. But I think being around one is, is great. And uh, so we're pretty close there, just with 15 stocks. We're almost diversified, so that's pretty amazing. Um, and I think that's about it with this question. Hope you guys understand it now.